all of you, all of you know Rhett Barnwell, right? <laughs> He's a wonderful composer um, wow. and all around musician. We love having him at the Atlanta Harp Center. Um, and he's going to be paid to say that. hanging with the harp. <laughs> kind of, though. <laughs> um, OK, uh, floor is whenever you want it. OK, well, thank you very much. Thank you all out there. I want to say in TV land, <laughs> what is it, internet land. Um, thank you for joining me today and, um, and joining us uh, from the Atlanta Harp Center who are presenting this program. Um, and I hope I hope you can all hear, and I hope that my internet doesn't go out. Um, we we did a trial run yesterday at four o'clock just to be on the safe side, and everything went swimmingly. And then I was giving a Skype lesson right before this at three thirty, and my internet completely went out for almost half an hour. So um, let's hope it stays up. We have a backup plan. Uh, the backup plan is we just stop and we all fix ourselves a drink and just do something else. Uh, since it is Cinco de Mayo, by the way, happy Cinco de Mayo. I don't know if you all have your margaritas ready or not, but um, anyway, so, which I think is a good segue because we're gonna talk about relaxation. And the, the title that was given, um, that we came up with for this is Relaxation in Action, which really sounds kind of odd because you think if you're relaxing, you're not doing anything, you're not in action, but in order to learn to relax, you have to do something uh, in terms of a musical instrument. But actually this applies to everything in life. You'll find, um, I, I play instruments other than the harp and this, this applies to other instruments as well as just anything. Um, you know, and when, like if somebody tells you, oh, just relax, like you're about to go out on stage or going to church to play or whatever. And somebody always well-meaning always says, oh, just relax. And it just makes you more tense, right? and you wanna slap them, and at least that's my experience. So I've had to learn how, actually how to relax. And if I can remember and have time, I'll tell you the story of when I was at the neurologist having an extraordinarily unpleasant procedure done on my back and involving a needle and blood. And I used some of these techniques and it helped like 100%. Anyway, um, two of the biggest obstacles I think to musicians, well, to anybody, but to musicians in particular, to really playing beautifully and, and doing a good job are tension and anxiety or fear. And they both kind of feed on each other. And if you're tense, it affects your technique. And if you're anxious, it makes you tense. And, you know, it's just a vicious cycle. So I want to hopefully in the next few minutes give you a, a way to deal with this, to overcome it, because it's, it's actually not that hard to do. Um, so I'm hoping that, that you'll, and I have some very concrete uh, examples, so you'll be able to take some. I'm not just going to sit here and talk off the top of my head. I'm going to actually give you something to do. Um, first of all, I want us to talk a little bit about uh, something that comes up a lot, and that is if, I know a lot of you, I'm mostly known for sacred music because I have a church position and I do a lot of sacred music, and um, I get as, as nervous in playing for church as I do for anything else. And, um, you know, there's a debate about, well, it's not a performance. Well, no, it's not, but it, but it is in a sense. Anytime you, you are playing and there are people listening, it is a performance regardless of the context. It's how you perceive it is what, what makes it the difference between say playing for a worship service or something else. And I, I, I a lot of what I'm saying is not original. I, I borrow things. I was going to say steal, but I borrow things from other people. And I, I want to say Louise Trotter said this, but I can't remember, um, that there's a difference between playing in front of people and playing for people. So think about that. If you're playing in front of people, you're anticipating sort of a me versus them, and they're you know going to possibly judge me or whatever. Whereas if you're playing for people, it means that you're giving this gift of the harp and a gift of music to them. So first thing is to change, to try to change that mindset that you're playing for people, not in front of people. So just put that in your brain and let it stir around for a minute. Um, the way that, and, and this is a condensed version of um, a two and a half hour workshop that I usually give, have given at the beginning in the middle and other places before. So I'm gonna try to get it done in this short amount of time. Um, the most common way that, and I, I speak completely out of experience, 
I have, um, I'll be honest, I've struggled for years with anxiety of playing in front of people. And I just had to come up with a way through years of reading books and watching videos and studying and talking to teachers and going, you know, just everything to come up with a very concise method that'll work for me. This may not work for you, but hopefully it will because I've been fortunate to study with some really, really uh, knowledgeable people in the field. So it boils down to some simple things. First of all, um, how, does, how does anxiety and fear manifest themselves when you're playing? And the, most people say, well, I start shaking and I have my hands are sweaty. How can I overcome that? Well, you, you can't overcome that unless you do this other thing first, which I'm going to tell you about. The thing that really gets me and gets most people is what we call negative self-talk. And what this is, Raise your hand if you have any idea what I'm talking about. It's where when you start playing, there's a little soundtrack that starts in your head and starts talking to you and starts telling you all these things. And then you suddenly are not sure. Well, I'll show you. Here, here's my inner soundtrack. So I'm going to play a piece I know extremely well. I can play it backwards and forwards in my sleep, standing on my head in Chinese at night in bed. I mean, it's one of these pieces. And there are occasions when... I feel like I've never played it before. And part of it is because this inner soundtrack starts. So this is kind of an example. And I've been running up and down the steps just now. So I'm kind of like worked up as it is. I'm uh, trying to get this computer working. So I'm a little anxious already. So here, here's, here's an example of my inner soundtrack. So I'll start playing, you know, and uh, I try not to be afraid, you know, be, be calm, whatever. <laughs> Where's the F sharp pedal? Oh, wait a minute. This is a lever harp, not a pedal harp. Oh my gosh, where are the levers? Um, and by then, you see, I'm already, I'm like half lost. And it's a piece I can play, you know, backwards with my hands tied just about. So um, one of the worst things that gets in our way is this inner soundtrack. And I'm going to show you a way to turn it off. If you've ever read the game, the inner, uh, or the game, read the book, the inner game of music or the inner game of tennis, they, they talk about this. It's not my own invention. So first of all, we've got this soundtrack and it may, it may even go on like, oh gosh, I just realized that um, my boss, which is true, is listening to this um, telecast here or broadcast. And I might lose my job if I screw this up. Um, you know, so it's things like that, or you see somebody, oh my gosh, there's Jane and she's in the Harp Society. And if I miss, they'll never ask me to play, you know, whatever, they'll never ask me to play in church again if I mess this up. So you've got this soundtrack going in your head. Not everybody does, but most, most people do. Um, this causes you to get tense, which then affects your technique because you start you know, using things like the claw instead of the, the flow. Um, so how do we deal with this? It's actually not that hard, but the reason we call this relaxation and action is because you do have to take some action to, to get it to work. It requires a practice of retraining your brain. So you're gonna to have to retrain your brain, um, but it's not hard. So how did I deal with this? And what is, here's a method that works for me. Um, I've heard for many years, people talk about mindfulness. Uh, doctors, uh, people that I've talked to and tried to you know, learn to deal with this. And they say, you've just gotta do something, you exercise or pray or meditate or whatever. And one of them kept talking about mindfulness or meditation. And so I thought, well, I'm just gonna read up on this and see what mindfulness is. And I wanna say, first of all, it has nothing to do with religion. It's, it's not a religion, it's not affiliated with that. There are some religions that do practice mindfulness meditation, but it is not, it is a standalone concept. It is not specifically religious. So I don't want anybody to get too worked up about that. Um, it's what it is. It's a way to declutter your mind. It's a way to get rid of the soundtrack, to get quietness and stillness in your mind. And in sports, they, yeah, you know, since I know so much about sports, um, they call it getting in the zone. You may have heard this word getting in the zone or musicians even. And what it is, it's a way of calming all this stuff down so that you're incredibly focused on the harp or the game or whatever. Um, so how do you do this? First of all, it's, asking yourself, why are you playing the harp in the first place? And so for some people who don't play in public, that's fine. This is not an issue so much. But even if you're, I have one student who, um, who may be listening, so I shouldn't give this example. 
uh, let's say I heard from someone, a friend of mine told me that if their spouse or something is in the other room, even though they're not in the room with them, it makes them nervous knowing that somebody else is listening to them play. So, but you can be a, what we call a self-nurturing harpist, which is someone who doesn't play in public or you just play for yourself. Um, or you play for others. Again, we're, we're, we, I want you to start out by reframing why you're playing. Are you performing to try to impress or are you performing to give this gift, this incredible gift we have of music? And especially right now with all that's going on, um, this is a great gift to, to be able to give, be it online or however. So, and you're going, okay, just get to the point. Tell us how to do it. Well, it's very simple. It's so simple, I'm almost embarrassed that, to tell you um, what it is, but it's accomplished. The first step, there, there are basically three parts to this. The first step is through deep breathing. I will tell you, and I will guarantee it, if you will do this, it will save your life when you play in front of people. Well, I, listen, I said in front of people, when you play for others um, and have nerve issues, deep breathing is gonna save your life. It's an instant fix and it's a permanent fix. So let's do, here's the interactive part. So we're gonna do basically a deep breathing exercise. Um, sorry, my one of my cats just walked in the room. <laughs> they're, they, I'm surprised they're not jumping in my lap right now, honestly. Um, deep breathing, what, what this does is it completely eliminates the channels in the brain that, that cause fear. Because if you're breathing deeply, it tells your brain, oh, wait a minute, I'm not afraid. I'm going into a state of relaxation. So it stops sending those chemicals to the brain that cause you to sweat and your hands to shake. So by deep breathing, you're actually sending a different signal to the brain. So there's a reason. So here's, here's the way we do it. What I want you to do before you practice the harp, this is part of your warm up. And it only takes a few seconds. I mean, some people can do this for hours, but a few minutes is I think of breathing, well, actually lower, but you can't see the camera, but way deep down in your abdomen, you don't necessarily have to put your hands there, but just be aware of deep down in your abdomen, just sit up kind of, you know, nice and relaxed, you get your body just kind of loose. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna breathe in through the nose and cool air through the nose and then warm air through pursed lips. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. And you don't have to count or anything right now. It's just, just it's kind of slow deep, but you're gonna focus on deep breathing. You can even say breathe deeply if you want to. So I'll inhale through my nose and exhale. And you, it's best to close your eyes, but you don't have to. So let's all try that. Just kind of a natural pattern and try to slow it down. I mean, don't asphyxiate, but um, start. So we'll breathe, inhale through the nose and exhale through the lips. And now as you do it, you will find your mind is gonna start to wander it's gonna keep keep doing it while I talk. Your mind is gonna start to wander. It's gonna say, this guy's nuts. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Or, wow, this really feels good. Or, wow, I can't wait till five o'clock and I really can fix that margarita he was talking about. Um, so what we wanna do is turn off that inner dialogue. And the way you do it is continue the deep breathing and tell yourself, breathe deeply. Focus on the breath coming from way, way down here. You can't see it because of the camera, but think of focusing on breathing from deep down in your abdomen. Okay, let's just try it for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. So inhale, exhale. Let your body relax. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. All right, so I also do this right before I play, especially in church. It's amazing what difference it makes. Um, I mean, it really can be kind of a form of prayer if you think about it, um, which, you know, if you're playing for church, you would be doing anyway. But um, I just sit quietly, um, you know, they're yakking and making all the announcements or whatever about the fish fry or the fundraising. And um, I just sit and, and do exactly what I'm telling you to do right now. I just think about deep breathing. And it's amazing when you go to play the harp, you feel like a different person. Um, I usually hope that I would feel like Yolanda Condonazis when I go to play the harp, but it doesn't always work. Um, how do you translate this to the harp? Um, the second component of this is the physical. And I discovered this, this has been years in the making, uh, trying to figure all this out. I uh, somehow, I was having back problems, I guess is what it was. And um, somebody said, oh, you ought to try yoga, you ought to try this, you ought to try that, well, yeah, whatever. Um, 
<laughs> pills are much easier, but I don't like doing that. So I found this um, thing on YouTube of seated uh, Tai Chi or Qigong. And again, it's not a religion, has nothing to do with religion. It's simply physical exercises. And I started doing them and I thought, wow, not only did it help my back, but it also started, I thought, wait a minute, this can kind of work with the heart too. So I'm going to show you, I know we're, I'm condensing a whole lot of stuff into a short amount of time. I'm going to show you two basic Tai Chi or Qigong. In fact, I've renamed this Harp Chi. I'm going to do a whole Harp Chi. Um, two basic exercises that I do before I practice. So I do my deep breathing and then I do these Tai Chi things, um, which you do the deep breathing while you do the Tai Chi. That's what we started with. So then you progress to the physical and then you progress to the harp. And this can all be done in 10 minutes or less or, or five minutes uh, as part of your warm up, And it will become so ingrained in your playing that you won't even think about it. It will, Trust me, if you do this on a regular basis, it will revolutionize your heart play. Um, so here are the basic ones. And they have these fancy names for them that are really clever, but I can't remember what they are. Something like, you know, crouching, dragon, breathing, fire or something. But so I just go with what I call position one. And you won't be able to see when I go all the way down. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to, my hands are going to go all the way down and touch my knees is what's happening. All right. So the basic first position for me is that you, you you do the same breathing, breathing through the nose, out through the, the lips as you make the movement. So watch me and then we'll do it together. So it's an inhale and then you exhale as you go down. And inhale. And exhale. And the key thing is the movements have to be very slow and very deliberate. And you, because these are the similar movements that you will use when you play the harp, as I'll show you in a minute, which we don't do a lot. Um, and if you've had experience in training in Tai Chi, I'm sure you're probably uh, rolling your eyes right now, but um, I actually have studied with, with people who are experienced in Tai Chi. So um, I don't consider myself an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I do have an online degree apparently in some things like this. The next one, um, which I think is useful for playing the harp, we're, we're going to expand like this and then come back in. Well, I'm gonna knock the harp over back a little bit. So just watch me once. So we're gonna do the basically the same thing. And we're gonna end it and go out. And then as we we're gonna exhale as we squeeze coming in. Inhale. And exhale as you squeeze in. If, you're, if you want to go ahead and do it with me. So inhale, out, and exhale. And down. There are a whole bunch more of these, and you're supposed to do like at least 10 of them in a row. Um, if you do an internet search, YouTube for seated Tai Chi or Qigong, there are a billion of them out there. Some of them aren't great, but, but there's some really good ones. Um, so how does this apply to the heart? Now, if you were able to download the handy little um, PDF called Awakening the Fingers, I will show you. So what happens next is, um, this is part of your warm-up. And we're going to focus on at the general rule of, of thumb, <laughs> now, pun intended, um, when you place thumb or finger, is you're going to inhale and then when you play you're going to exhale so um it's very crucial to warm up the fingers to stretch because the muscles get tense overnight and as we get older it, it's even harder this reduces tension prepares the muscles and what i've done here the very first one if you've got the handout it's called um finger yoga i can't even read my own typing um so basically what this is, is you just improvise. You play any note you want to, any finger, but you do it like this. So I'm going to inhale, place on the string, press and exhale. And you see my hand is doing a motion very similar to the Tai Chi motion. And then you just do different fingers, inhale. Maybe third finger. Inhale, exhale. 
So you have this very kind of slow, you'll find this is really cool. It helps you, it really does help you relax. And, and the body releases a, endorphins into the brain that actually make you feel better. So it's not just, you know, making up some kooky thing. It really has a definite physical thing. So, um, so basically the first one is just a very easy, just pick random notes, one finger, just to get acquainted, get in kind of that zone of breathe in, breathe out. The next one, I must confess, I stole from uh, Mary Jane Diargo, I think, uh, at a conference. Um, I have renamed it the butterfly. She may have called it the butterfly. I can't remember um, if this was hers. But anyway, it's the next one on your sheet. And it looks like, oh my gosh, we're suddenly going from one finger to six fingers. Um, but it, what it is, it's, it's an expansion of the, of the chi exercise that did this. So what we're doing, I'll do it, is we're inhaling and exhaling. You go all the way out, open your chest, inhale, go to the next chord as you inhale. Exhale. You can do it a little bit faster. Exhale. Inhale. It takes a little bit of coordination. In fact, I'm when I'm talking and trying to explain it, it's hard to inhale and exhale and do it at the same time. But but it you can do it if you're not trying to talk. Or you can adapt it just one hand. Adapt things to your level. Even if something's written like this, you can just adapt it to be one hand. Or go up, one step, inhale, exhale, and so forth. The crucial thing here is to get this slow, deliberate movement. You're opening the chest, you're stressing, stretching your muscles. Um, I love doing this one. Um, and again, you can get these done in like 10 minutes. The next couple of ones on the handout, if you if you have them, are not really exactly. This is my kind of a general warm up that I do. I do different ones, but the next couple, the triads and the six, don't really involve this so much. They're mainly just getting used to. Although you can, of placing one finger and playing another one, especially the thumb, you know, has a mind of its own. Um, you, I see this so much the pinch, and we want to avoid that at all costs. So this one is to get your thumb to do what it's supposed to do so that's the point of this but let's flip over to the to the back if you have it um and this one the um the arpeggios this actually was i again learned from somebody else but um with arpeggio this is your warm-up now this is not your you're not practicing technique you're practicing warm-up and breathing and relaxation so with these, what you want to do, you can do them a couple of different ways, but you want to do them very, very, very slowly. So you inhale. I'm just going to do one hand. You inhale. And as you exhale, you and you can even move up on, you, you know, you want movement. The, the thing I see in so many Harpus students especially is, okay, play. <laughs> Boom. You grab, you're holding onto the strings for dear life, and then you just, you know, do this. Movement, you want movement. If you, if you look at videos of really good harpists, um, well, most of them, um, they, there is movement and this will get rid of tension. All right, so we're doing the four fingers. Is that what I said? Yeah, okay, so we inhale. And then as you release your breath, you pull. You can keep the hand going. And I, this is where the Tai Chi movement comes in. So th then you keep the hand moving, you inhale again and place the next chord. And so I was, I can't talk and breathe, but say so I was inhaling and then I breathe and release. Inhale, place, exhale, release. And keep the movement going. Um, you can add the the other hand or do it. What I love doing, you know, th that's the normal arpeggio we do. Da, 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 da. How about doing a seventh instead? So what I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing, except instead of going to C here, I'm doing a B. It's, it's just a really different, I mean, to me, that's more relaxing than, so you could, you could do that one. 
Um, but the key thing is, is to try to incorporate this. And I know I'm going very quickly and just giving you, you know, but I, I hope this is, um, this is helpful and that you're, you understand what I'm talking about. Um, you can take any of your little warm up exercises, uh, uh, like um, arpeggios and thirds and do the same thing. Or if you can only play two fingers at a time. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. The main thing is to get the inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale very slowly with slow hand movements. And I guarantee you, and I, I will, will I, I do, I would say your money back, but this is a freebie, um, that this will reduce your anxiety level incredibly. And when you're playing and you get anxious, you know, with something, you know, in the middle of the song or whatever, all you have to do is just say, breathe. And you tell yourself to breathe and you've done the breathing exercises beforehand. So your body will go, oh yes, breathe. And then you'll notice a huge, huge difference. Um, I know, let's see, what else do we need to talk about? So what I, um, I use kind of breathe as my, I call it my emergency or my safe word during a performance, because if you're performing again, the soundtrack starts in your head, maybe you, you don't want to counteract it with, with more soundtrack, but if you have one word or one concept, you can. And by simply saying breathe or breathe deeply when all this garbage starts, your body will do what your mind says, and then it will shut down those bad chemicals going to your brain. Again, it takes practice. Don't wait until your first performance and try all this because it won't work. Well, it will, but it won't be as effective. So what you want to do is to try to uh, incorporate this into your, into your practice. Um, before... We're going to take a few questions, but um, I wanted to play a little piece for you. This is completely shameless self-promotion, but my justification, uh, my position at the Atlanta Harp Center um, is a composer in residence, which means that I basically take phone orders and sell strings and change strings during the day. No, um, I, do, I do all that, but I do write music. And um, I, have, I have finished a piece, actually it was commissioned last year by a grandmother who was having a new grandbaby. And she, she oh, she's a harpist, and she wanted me to write something that she could play for her, her new baby and her other granddaughter who was expected to enjoy playing with the new baby. And she wanted something kind of along those lines. So I, I wrote this, and it has not, it has just been released last night, sent over to the Harps, Atlanta Harp Center, so you can actually buy it online as a PDF, or um, the, the printed versions are available shortly. But in my role as composer in residence, I feel I would be bereft if I did not play a new composition for you. Um, and you know, the great thing about all this internet stuff is, um, I mean, it's it's awful that we're having to go through the, the COVID-19. And I mean, I won't even talk about that, but the, the if there is a silver lining is that we can still shop online. And, um, you know, for those, I mean, I like to sh I shop online anyway, but now even more so, but you can buy a harp online. Did you know that? You can go to the Atlanta Harp Center website and buy a new used whatever harp and they will ship it to you for free. And I mean, who knew? So um, do take advantage of that. So this piece is called um, The Calls of the Innocent. And it's not difficult. Well, <laughs> if I butcher it, you'll say, gosh, it sounded like it was. Um, but no, it's not difficult. It's kind of uh, beginner intermediate level or low intermediate level. And um, I'm just going to play it for you right now. So that was Calls of the Innocent.
And that was in fact the world premiere performance of it. And uh, my, my soundtrack started going a little bit in my head. I went, oh my gosh, wait a minute. I've never played this in public before. Um, and I went, stop talking to herself, can't, uh, breathe. So anyway, um, I believe that we, um, some people have sent questions in. Um, I am, uh, I think Katie is going to um, tell me what they are, I guess, <laughs> because yes. I can't read anything right now. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions for Rhett, please feel free to type them out in the chat and I will ask him for you. That goes for our Facebook Live um, viewers as well. Um, at the moment, we have a request for you to demonstrate the rolled cord exercise that you have on your handout. Oh, that one. Okay. Oh, uh, before I forget to, um, don't let me forget to mention next week about Kim Robertson. Yeah, yeah I got it. Okay. All right. All right. Good. I just happened to think about that. Um, oh, the rolled one. Yes. So the rolled one, um, it's, it's, um, it's the same kind of thing. And if you, if you're not proficient enough to do both hands at the same time, because roll cords are a whole different ball of wax. Um, but it's the same thing. So you're just, you're breathing, you breathe and exhale, inhale, and just go up very slowly and, and I do the do the little butterfly thing um, and this will actually help with your technique because with the roll cord you want to get a nice rip I hate to use that word but that's really kind of what it is and this will help you do it if you want to practice like the best way to actually practice nice rolled chords is you would do it um that you could do the breathing in and out thing too but exhale Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, exhale, blah, blah, and you know, so forth and so forth. Then you add the next one, and then you add the next one. And you're still using this motion with your hands, and you're exhaling and inhaling. So you can add the inhale, exhale, harp, chi motion to pretty much anything. I hope that, that was helpful. Next. Any other questions? It must have been clear as mud. Oh, there's one, but I can't read it. Sorry, right, my, my microphone is muted. Okay. And then oh, we have there was some, request. Oh, sorry. Okay. We have a um, request for the crossover exercise. Is there a crossover exercise? <laughs> sorry. Let me, um, let me see. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's the same, same kind of thing. And when I say crossover, it's you're not crossing the fingers under you're, you're not doing that but it's um it's just again inhale exhale slowly and deliberately and as as you're playing one hand the other one and you wouldn't really play like this you know you, i mean you wouldn't use i'm exaggerating the movements but in order to get to develop the control, I think in an exercise like this, you do exaggerate these movements. Because it, it just loosens you up and makes you relax. And then when you actually play it normally, there's still motion. The, mo the thing I see most often is, which is not pretty. Okay, any others? Let me see. Do you exhale before, during, or after you play the string? Do you exhale? You exhale as you play it, ideally, ideally. So the inhale comes as you placed. And as you actually play the string, you're exhaling, which is the very first one on the page. This is a good way to simplify it. So you inhale, and as you play, you exhale. And when you play, also, this is just a little technical thing. Um, you wanna press onto the string as you, you press and release this tech harp, good harp technique anyway. Some people say squeeze or press, especially if you've got three fingers and you're playing a chord, 
you know, don't just pull it. You, you want to kind of squeeze and then you exhale as you squeeze and so it becomes, well, that was kind of loud, sorry. But yeah, so you exhale at the point that you play, that you pluck or squeeze or however you want to say it. Okay. And then what was the name of your new composition again? It's called, uh, what is it? Um, I'm sorry. No, I, I know what it's called. It's called Calls, C-A-L-L-S, Calls of the Innocent. Okay. And that PDF is available on the Atlanta Harp Center website. I added it this morning. Um, and then we have a question from Mary Jane D'Arville. Oh my God, it's my boss. She's going to fire me. <laughs> What did I do wrong? <laughs> do you ever add counting to your breathing at the harp meditative warm up? Um, I haven't, but you could. Um, sometimes what I'll do, I, I did this more as a, when I was a horn player because you have to really sustain, you know, breath, obviously, when you're playing your horn. So what some, what can be done, and I have taught it this way sometimes, when you're doing the basic breathing exercise, that you do count because you want to um that's one way to slow it down so and then one two three it's maybe to ten or something i don't really do it when i play so much because it adds another element to you know the thing and we're trying i mean you want to have the rhythm if you're, you you want to do it in in rhythm but um or in well i say in rhythm i mean you don't want to just play haphazardly but i think that count counting involves the left brain and we're trying in this case to get the right brain to its full functioning capacity um, <laughs> because music expression and so forth is a predominantly right brain activity um, ver uh, any kind of math whatever's left i mean they're both involved obviously with playing but we're trying to really unlock the right brain with with this if that makes sense okay and our next question um, if anyone else has questions, remember, just type them in the chat. Um, as very much a beginner, is there a percentage of exercises to trying to play an actual song that you suggest? Um, is, so, so, like, what is the percentage of exercises versus playing an actual piece of music? Um, there's really no set number. Um, a lot of, with a lot of my students, I will take the piece they're working on and turn it into an exercise. But um, you really kind of need, need a teacher to help with that. I don't know. I mean, I still, even as, you know, a so-called professional, I guess, um, I love doing, I'll do a half an hour, 45 minutes of exercises before I play repertoire. Now, I mean, if you have the luxury of time, yes, but um, basics are always good. Arpeggios, scales as a beginner. Um, but you can get so bogged down with it that you do too many, too you get too involved with the technique and then you don't end up making music. So there's really no set rule, but um, I don't know. Um, I, you know, I encourage, you know, if you're, if you're a beginner, say you're practicing, you know, 45 minutes, maybe an hour a day or 45 minutes, I would do, you know, 10 or 15 minutes at least of technique and, you know, kind of warm up -y things and breathing or whatnot. And then, but that's just an, an idea. So. Okay. And are you flexing your wrists in the warm-ups? Yes. Yeah, your your whole you're really involving your whole one Im, I love images because I'm just a visual person. If you think of ballet, if you watch ballet dancers, how they're well, I'm not gonna demonstrate. I'm I left my tutu upstairs. Um, but yeah, so especially with the, the flexing the wrist is a is a big part of it. And when you play the harp, I and mean, you have to be a little bit careful technically, depending on your teacher and your method that you've studied with, because you don't always want to be flexing the wrist while you, you know, play the harp. But you want to have the, you want to, you don't want to necessarily flex it, but you want to have the flexibility to flex it if you do choose to flex. Does that make a bit of sense? Um, so when you're, when you're, I do the, I exaggerate. I think it's better to exaggerate, and then that you can always bring it back in. But if you're always playing in this little box here without anything, then it's more difficult, I think. So. So you mentioned three things to prepare. The first was breathing exercises. The second was the Tai Chi. And what was the third? Um, oh, the third was, yeah. So the third one was, was taking the, the basic Tai Chi movements and then translating them to the heart. 
that was the third one. But so, so doing the doing the movement and breathing with the warm up, and you can take any warm. I mean, you can do whatever warm up you want to do. But um, so that was the third step. Yeah, I hope that made sense. Okay. And then our next question on the third exercise, you plucked with the thumb. Is that correct? Then do you switch and pluck with the index finger? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So, and um. Now, if you took these at face value and did them all <laughs> exactly as I've written, we'd be here till next year trying to get through them. But no, that's exactly right. So the first time through, um, you can do it where you play just the thumb. And the second time you play just the bottom finger. The, I, I'm just a real stickler about the thumb because it seems to be one of the most problematic of the fingers. Um, well, with myself and with, with a lot of students I see. So this one and the next one really helps you to focus on that. And then on the sixth, you're just doing, but, but yeah, so do you can, then the next time you do the, the bottom finger, but it still helps you to keep your, the thumb in the correct position with, as my wonderful teacher at Florida State, Mary Ramon used to say, she's still teaching after 50 years, amazing woman, space at the base. Um, and, and I'll never forget it. So you want to have space at the base of the thumb. Okay. And then Any our more? next question is from Facebook from Sarah. Um, she says, although not part of the talk, can you demonstrate turning fingers under when doing an arpeggio? What was the next question? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that one. <laughs> um, turning the turning the fingers. Oh, so you're talking about doing a um, like a like that? Yeah. Guess, yeah. So yeah, just like that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's really just you don't really do it so much with this hand. Um, one of my other students asked me this the other day. That, that was a planted question. Um, I don't know. I just think about the well. Th this would be the fourth finger. The fourth finger just you practice them very slowly for starters. So the fourth finger just goes under, and I think of it being low. You you try to get this kind of situation going. And I to practice it, what I do is I place it. I rock my hand out and then reset it. I mean, there's not time to do that when you're actually playing it, but it, it gets <laughs> it's sort of a rebound thing. I don't know. But does that make any sense at yeah. all? William got a shout out in the background. Oh, oh William. <laughs> oh, can you see him? I can't even see him. William, you want to come say hello? No, he's. <laughs> I, I won't so tell you was, what he's looking, but <laughs> that was the last question that I had. If anyone else has any more, like I said, feel free to type them in. Um, but if no one else has any questions, we are at the 445 mark, um, which was where we wanted to cut off. Uh, so, Brett, did you want to talk about Kim's for next week or did you want me to? Sure, yeah. I normally don't like to talk about the competition, but no, I'm kidding. Kim is a very dear friend of mine. So next week, Kim Robertson is going to be um, featured at four o'clock on Tuesday. And the title of her talk is, our presentation is Technique Tune-Ups for the Lazy Harpist. I, I misread my, I thought it, I thought it said Tune-Ups for the Crazy Harpist. I thought, well, that can't be right, although it could be. But she's, she's doing Technique Tune-Ups for the lazy harpist. It's a way to um, keep your fingers in shape when you don't have a whole lot of time to practice. And uh, Kim, if you've never taken a workshop with her, she is fabulous and she's hysterically funny and a phenomenal musician. So you, you won't wanna miss that. I mean, it's getting Kim to, you know, have a, a, a on air like this is a, is a um, unique experience, so. Um, um, so I guess that's, that's it. I, I really appreciate all of you, um, tuning in and, um, I hope this has been helpful. If, if anybody has any questions, 
uh, after the fact, um, you know, you'll feel free to email me if you can find my email address or send me a, I'm not at the Harp Center very much. Well, I'm not there at all right now because of all this mess, but so don't call the Harp Center looking for me, but um, you can, you could either email the Harp Center or, or um, send me a Facebook uh, message or something and I'll try to get back to you within a couple of months <laughs> um, as soon as I can. So, and I also offer Skype lessons too. I hope it was okay to say that. But thank you all so much. It's good to see I see a few familiar faces. Um, and a hello to, oh, there's my sister. <laughs> Have you been there the whole time? <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I really, I can't, my eyes are, uh, anyway, and everybody's small. But so I'm sorry if I didn't wave at you personally. But thank you very much. And I hope this was helpful. And I hope that you all will be able to use the harp in a way during this challenging time to kind of deal with stuff. I mean, it's. It's therapeutic, and I think these deep breathing things will help all of us just to, to relax some. I mean, it's it's great for that. So, thank you, Rhett. Thank you, thank you. So, thank you, Rhett, for joining thank us today you. on our Hanging with the Harp session. Thank you, uh, Rhett. Thank you're you. welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I uh, hopefully we'll maybe see you again sometime soon yeah. on. So, Next week's Hanging with the Harp session, like Brett said, is with Ken Robinson. Um, still the same time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, Zoom and Facebook Live, just like this week. If you have not signed up yet for our Home with the Harp newsletter, which is where the Zoom link can get directly emailed to your inbox, you can do that um, if you email us info, I-N-F-O, at atlantaharpcenter.com. We can send you that link to sign up for the newsletter, um, or it will be on Facebook. And if you didn't get the PDF um, of Rhett's handout, that is still currently live on the Atlanta Harp Center website as well. I put a link in the chat earlier. Um, that will be available for the next couple of days, and then it will switch over to the one for next week. Um, you can also email us for that PDF as well. Um, a replay of this Zoom meeting. I'm, we have it recorded and we are going to be putting it on YouTube and putting another video on Facebook as well. So you can replay this, or if you didn't get to catch it live, then you'll be able to play it as well. But I guess when you're playing it and I tell you that, it'll already be there. Um, yeah, and another shout out on Thursday mornings at 11 a.m., Virginia Heart Center and Atlanta Heart Center have been having a Facebook Live tutorial. Um, just general harp things. This week we're going to be learning how to regulate a lever um, at the Atlanta Harp Center and me actually. Um, so if you wanted to tune into that, um, that would be available as well. And that is it for us. Bye-bye. All, right. all right. Have a good okay. night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Katie. Thank you all. Happy practicing. Bye. <laughs> Bye.